everybody. It's Miss Carol. How are you? I hope you're doing well. Um, I wanted to bring something a little different today. Um, and I am looking to use some things that I had around my house. So I had an old um, Highlights magazine. And the folks at Highlights were happy to let me share this with you. So I'm really excited because um, you might remember I love showing you things from the different magazines. And it's Highlights magazine. Um, but if you don't have one, you can go to highlights.com and then there's a little button when you go to that website where you can click for kids and they give you um, so many different things that you can do online. Um, you can join in on some activities, there's uh, jokes, there are um, games that you could play, different stories that you could read, you could find crafts that you could do. Um, really a lot of fun. I love reading um, from highlights and I remember doing it when I was a kid. Um, so let me show you. I'm going to show you this picture because um, I, in order for me to read it, I'm going to put the picture up here for you to see it so that I can then read along with you. Hopefully I'll get it in focus. Here we go. Ready? See the birds? This is called Bird Choir. A bird choir sits near my window and practices every day. The cardinal has a solo and the bass is a big blue jay. And when I hear them singing in nature's harmony, I think they all have gathered to sing a song for me. I thought that was really nice because I've been sitting outside and I hear the birds um, and I'm always looking to see, you know, what birds are out there and what they sound like. Um, so even if you have the window open, you don't have to be outside. You can hear them through the window. Some of them are really loud and, and some of them are quiet um, and some of them sound so fun. Um, I have a story here. It is called um, One Squirrely Bird. And if you take a look, it's a woodpecker. It's actually called an acorn woodpecker. And this is a tree. And take a look at what this woodpecker's doing. I'm gonna read it to you. The acorn woodpecker has a very unusual winter storehouse. So let me kind of get closer so you can see. There's the woodpecker. He has an acorn in his mouth, but he's also doing something with them near that tree. When it comes to acorns, the acorn woodpecker is a lot like a bushy-tailed squirrel. This bird finds, hides, and eats acorns. Acorn woodpeckers live in oak and pine trees along the west coast of the United States. So that's not going to be near us. We're on the east coast. But um, we, we still have woodpeckers, we just wouldn't have this one. Um, so these woodpeckers, they also are in Mexico and Central America, and they can stay in their homes year round because of the mild winters in those areas. Um, but you know what's interesting? They have a very unusual way of storing their food. They spend most of the, of the fall drilling perfectly round holes into the trunk of a tree, and then they pop an acorn into each of those holes. In the warm months, the acorn woodpecker eats insects, fruits, and tree sap. But when it gets colder in the cooler months, those foods are harder for them to find. And so the bird relies on acorns that it has stored in its tree. With its long beak, the woodpecker pries an acorn from its hiding place in the bark. Uh, the bird flies to a strong branch and then it places the acorn into a crack in the branch to keep it still. Now here's where it gets kind of interesting. Using its strong beak, using it like a hammer, the woodpecker cracks the shell and then it pecks out the pieces of the acorn. Can you see the acorn in the tree? Now, you may wonder if all this drilling and storing hurts the tree, but because the acorn woodpeckers use the trees that have thick bark, they never drill past the outside bark, so it doesn't get to the inside of the tree, and the tree stays healthy. So I thought that was really neat. I've never seen one. Again, they don't live in this area, but now I want to show you something else that I thought was really cool. Um, these 
woodpeckers. I wanted to know what they sounded like. And I don't know if you've ever heard what different birds sound like and have been able to identify them. So this is a website, it's called audubon.org. And again, they have a section for kids. So um, this wasn't necessarily on the kids section, but I typed in and was able to search the acorn woodpecker. And I wanna let you know what that is going to sound like. So if you listen, I'm gonna play it. I have my computer here. I'm gonna play what the acorn woodpecker sounds like. You ready? Can you hear it? I would have never thought. And of course, this is your typical woodpecker sound. It's like a hammer. And so that's pretty interesting because it makes you wonder, does their beak ever hurt? I have no idea. I thought that was really cool. So I had to share that with you because to me that was just super fun. Um, and I have another highlights story. It's actually just a little poem. So we did birds and now this is about an itchy cricket. See my friend the cricket? And then down here are his other friends. So this story reads, young Connor was a cricket from many moons ago. Poor Connor had an itchy wing, and my, it bugged him so. He tried his best to scratch it. His arms were just too small. He used a twig, a leaf, a branch. They didn't help at all. So Connor tried one last thing to take the itch away. He rubbed both wings together. Hooray, that saved the day. But something special happened when Connor scratched his itch. His wings produced a lullaby, a song in perfect pitch. Crickets still play Connor's song from many moons ago. Do all the crickets have an itch? I guess we'll never know. Have you heard crickets? Crickets make noises too. Um, and usually you hear them at night. They almost sound like little peepers, cheep, 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 but that's the, their wings rubbing together. So pretty interesting. Um, and another thing that I, I, I wanted to share, Highlights has so many different stories, different types of formats. So parents, this is something that, you know, you're bound to find something that's of interest. This is like a child's graphic novel. This is called the Timber Toes. Um, so you could all also read a story um, in graphic novel format. Kind of a little difficult to do it, you know, online for a story time. Um, but something fun that you could also do. The, the Itchy Cricket, going back to the story, that was written by Christine Morrell or Morell. So I want to make sure I give her credit. Um, and the last thing, I don't know if I mentioned to you that if you were to go online and take a look at what Highlights has available, um, you can look up dinosaurs. So, take a look. Look at that. Aqualops. That thing is really interesting. So, an Aqualops is the earliest known horned dinosaur of North America a three pound cousin of the seven ton Triceratops, so it's much, much smaller. This little plant eater is known only from its skull. Now, if you take a look, you'll see that there's a small horn or a crest on the front of its beak. That's kind of interesting. He has a curved beak, probably used to pick choice pieces of plants. So being a plant eater, luckily, um, wasn't something that the other uh, animals had to worry about. Um, he literally ran on his hind legs. So his front legs are a little short. He, he would look kind of funny running because his front legs are a little too short, but he would stand up and run on his back legs. 
Um, and they think that he might have also had some scales. So if these things are interesting to you, um, going on highlights.com will allow you to see a lot of this stuff. Um, and then when you come back to the library, which we really can't wait to see you, but I know we have to do what we have to do right now. Um, when you come back, you can then go and take out the different highlights magazines. Um, and also I wanted to let you know, and parents, that they have other magazines. So the magazine called Hello is for ages zero to two. They have High Five, and that's a magazine for ages two to six. They also have a bilingual edition, and that's for ages two to six. And then the highlights, like we just read, was for ages six to 12. Um, but that's just a guideline. I, I think that you could adapt all those stories to any ages, really. And I, I enjoyed them, and I'm not telling you how old I am. <laughs> so I really miss you guys. I hope you're doing well. Um, I love being able to share this with you, and I hope you enjoy it. Any suggestions, any questions, anything that we can do, you let us know. And um, that's it for now. I'll see you hopefully soon. Keep checking for more of our videos, and keep reading. Bye.